Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to a special episode of the Prog Talks. Um, I'm your host, Dario, and with me today calling from the Netherlands is Paul van Berlo. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? Hi, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. It's Saturday, uh, one week before prognosis, and you are, of course, uh, organizing the festival. Um, and uh, yeah, we thought we'd check in and uh, yeah, check in how's the preparations been going. As we all know, um, you had to postpone the festival twice, I think. Twice. Right? Yeah. Um, so, so when did you when did you start initially for? preparation for the festival probably right after the first edition in 2019 right right right, right. <clears throat> maybe maybe even before because the first edition was uh, like a big success you know we sold out uh and and, and the shows were great and the, the atmosphere was great so uh we, we started immediately with the second edition um well and we had again a very nice lineup with uh, anathema of course and uh, catatonia and haken and enslaved As the as the big names on the on the poster, mm -hmm. uh, well then, like everybody knows, COVID happened and we had to postpone. And we tried to move as many bands as possible with us to a year later. Um, but the thing with Anathema happened, so they were not on it, and they were. Oh, I think they were replaced by Haken. I think originally, yeah. and then we had to also cancel that edition due to COVID, so we had to move. Well, again, we tried to take everybody along. Um, but Haken, you know, they, they their, their tour uh, got cancelled or they cancelled their tour, so for them it wasn't... Did it make sense to come over just for a one-off show? You know, it cost a lot of money, of course, for them to, to come over. So uh, we had Leprous step in, which is great. <laughs> Perfect replacement. <laughs> Perfect replacement. One of my favorite bands. Uh, but we had them, of course, on the first edition. So we thought, you know, we don't want to have them again on the second edition. But maybe Leprous is one of those bands that will come back every edition and, and doing a special show uh, every time because it's a great band, great guys. And they have, uh, well, a great um, back catalog, of course, of, of their music. Now doing a by request set with... You know, I've seen I've seen the the numbers that are that have been voted, so that's going to be a it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm look, really looking forward to that show. So we're glad that finally the festival can happen. Um, I mean, it looks like it's going to happen. It's only one week from now, so it's, I think it's going to happen. Um, but the, even even now. Um, COVID has uh, a lot of influence in the music industry, live music industry. Lots of bands are canceling their shows and their tours. Um, uh, ticket sales are still down. You know, people are maybe still scared to go to, well, especially to indoor concerts. So that's that's a reason why shows get canceled, why why tours get canceled. And well, we have had like well five, six, seven, eight. I I, I lost count. Bands canceling the festival, which is really uh, frustrating, both for us uh, as organizers, but also, of course, for the for the people who bought a ticket for the festival and were hoping to see well that that band, and then they cancel. You know, that's it's a, it's a, that stuff. Yeah, but but you you always manage to 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 get a replacement uh, in 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 some of the cases um, like Sermon got replaced by Novena and that uh, that for for me that that was kind of the last part that I needed that I needed to to say okay now now I'm, I have to come because <laughs> I've been waiting to to see Novena for forever I I had actually I had booked my ticket uh, also a, a flight ticket to London to see their um, release show. Um, but then everything got canceled. That was in, in, in the, uh, it should have been in May, uh, 2020, I think. 
Um, so yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to to see them. You just uh, you just mentioned that Lepers are gonna uh, play a BioQuest set. Um, the same uh, is uh, uh, Catatonia is going gonna do the same, and uh, you have also Enslaved and the Ocean doing special sets. Um, so all of the big bands you managed to 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 uh, uh, convince to do special set. How, how do you come up with these ideas? Um, do do just ask them or are they offering or how, how does these special sets um coming into play <laughs> well we we, we want to do um uh, prognosis as a, a a special festival you know a, a festival w w that you will remember where, uh, that, that when you've attended it so we don't want a band to play their regular set you know these days Uh, special sets are uh, well; they're, they're quite common. Um, so we ask bands, you know, we, we we like you to do a special set, and then, well, we talk with the band about uh, what what might be uh, a special set for them. They they could play uh, one album uh, in in its entirety. That's that's what we did the first time with Lepers, of course. Um, uh, they can do a by request set or or highlight an album because it's like 25 years ago that it, that it came out. You know those kinds kinds of things, and um, well, I can I, I think I can give a, a little hint of next year's edition where we have again special sets with bands doing acoustic sets and instrumental sets, uh, but also uh, you know maybe with with, with uh, some orchestral things added to them. So um, well, the idea is to give people a special um uh incentive <laughs> experience uh, yeah yeah at, at the festival and uh, you know because if a band's on tour lots of bands play the same set all over the, all over which can which can be fun of course but we like to offer something special and then we talk to the band and of course the band has to rehearse extra for this so uh, it, it, it might cost a little bit more for them because they have to put some more time in it but we we think it's worth it Wonderful. Um, yeah, you you just hinted at at, at uh, preparations for next year already for the third, which is gonna be the third edition, and that the first edition, um, you you also had clinics and uh, and and panels um, with with uh, people from the industry talking about uh, uh, stuff that's going on in the scene, and um, so um, will will you be bringing these back uh, in the future? Do you plan? on uh, doing special things like that as well again yeah we do because we, we we like the clinics i really think that's also an extra added value to the festival that you can you know in the prog scene uh, obviously there are a lot of musicians like yourself you know and and uh, how fun is it to go to a, to a, a clinic where your favorite musician tells you about his playing and shows you tricks and licks or whatever so we, we think it's an extra added value uh, and we want to bring these back uh, next year. We didn't do it for this year because we had to uh, postpone twice and well, with COVID be everything being uncertain and with lots of bands again canceling, you know, when, 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 uh, and, and, and uncertain of the tour schedules. So it was too much of a risk for this year, uh, but we want to do it again next year. Certainly. That's that's great. Um, and, yeah. also, and, and another new thing is there's also going to be uh, a second, uh, another edition of Prognosis uh, in Europe, the weekend after the weekend in Eindhoven. Um, we will pronounce that ne next week. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Uh, you People out there, uh, uh, be sure to to follow our prognosis. Um, social media channels uh, to, to keep up to date with the announcements. Um, lots of cool stuff brewing in the background there already. Um, yeah, uh, you, you, uh, with two, two, two stages, one bigger and one smaller, it's always a challenge, I guess, to, um, to program the bands into, into a um, um, satisfying time schedule and I think you know that uh, you, uh, you you've seen a lot of uh, fans um, were not really satisfied with uh, 
some overlaps and stuff. So, so uh, I, I guess that's also a, a special thing, e even more so with with last minute cancellations and replacements to um, try to come up with uh, with with in some cases uh, some uh, um, compromise more or less to to try to make the most out of it, right? Right, it's a difficult thing. Um, it's like we, we, we just try to program um, nice bands, good bands, new bands, and sometimes the band uh, really explodes in a short time. Um, uh, a good example was like Soen. Uh, we, we had them, uh, well, we had them booked in the, in the small stage for, at the first edition because you know the, the tours they did at the, at the time that we booked them. They were they were like playing for uh, 100, 200, maybe 300 people, so that would fit fit great in the small room. But then, well, they kind of exploded, and everybody wanted to see uh, wanted to see it. And so, well, that gave uh, of course a little problem because there was no possibility to to move them to the to the main stage because those uh, spots were all already spoken for. You know, when we make make a deal with the bands, they ask, yeah, "What's our what's our spot? What's our playing time?" Well, uh, all the schedules are are um, made to fit all those, so it's, it's it's impossible to change at such a late stage. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was fun, of course, for Soen that they had a a big room with of, well a, a packed room with everybody wanting in. Um, well, the same is now, uh, for instance, with but you you na named them already, Novena. Um, which are uh, an exciting, pretty new band, uh, and, and I think a lot, lots of people are wanting to see them. You know, but they play in a small room because they're a small band. They've, ne they've never played before, and uh, I think, and um, outside of the UK, <laughs> outside of the UK. Um, so yeah, well, that's that's we just have to see how it goes, and and that's why we have the overlap. And sometimes because uh, we know uh, it has to be safe, of course. And when the when the, when uh, the headliner uh, Catatonia ends is finished with a set in the in the big hall, and after that uh, the last band clone in the small hall starts, then everybody will want to go from there to there, and that's not a safe safe um, uh, thing. Mm -hmm. so we decided to 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 have clone start a little bit earlier, so people will, that that really want to see clone have to go there earlier and well, there are even some people that like clone better than Caratonia. I don't like Caratonia at all. So they, they, <laughs> they, they can go to, you know, that's just the thing with, with festivals. I, I don't think I know a festival with, which has more than one stage that uh, where, where the, the stages are uh, equally big. So everybody can go in there, even at the big outdoor festivals, like, like grass pop, you know, if everybody wanted to go in into the into the well, what's the dome called? It doesn't fit. You know, it's only five thousand people can go in there, and there's like fifty on the ground. So, <laughs> you know, that's just what what comes along with uh, with being a festival, and it's nice for the bands that 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 they had there's so much interest for them. So we just take it as a compliment. Okay. Um, yeah, the 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 lineup is is packed, and uh, as we already uh, uh, saw that that you also uh, managed to compensate for some last minute cancellations with with exciting and uh, interesting uh, uh, replacements. Is there any special band for you personally that you're looking forward to that you, maybe some people might not have on their radar? <laughs> Well, we, we uh, actually there is because um, uh, we had a last minute cancellation of uh, Marathon, which of course was very, very sad. Um, well, they issued a statement because of personal reasons. Uh, and I know what they are and it's true. So that, well, we, we try to, to get them over next year. Um, but it was very last minute. So we had to, you know, it's really difficult to find another band. And then we found uh, somebody mentioned Cobra the Impaler to me. So I put it on at home, and I was really like, "Wow, this is this is great!" <laughs> so, so we well, we we were able to to get them to to come and play, and I'm really looking forward to the show. And and they they are they are from the Netherlands, right? I think they're from Belgi Belgium. Belgium, yeah. it's Dutch Belgium. Okay, so so not that far away. That's not that far away. 
easier to to jump on a possibility like that uh, last yes. minute, right? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to book any flights or long train trips. Yeah, well, um, some, some of the guys had to play a gig later that night in Antwerp, so that's why we had to move them pretty pretty early in the schedule. Um, but that was okay. Ah, yes. I, that, that that reminds me. Um, 2019, I was able to go to Euroblast uh, finally after uh, most of the years before it it clashed with Proc Power Europe. Uh, so I couldn't go to Euroblast. But 2019, I managed to go to both. And at Euroblast, there was yeah 22 from Norway playing, also with Frederick from Marathon uh, on the vocals, and they were playing somewhere in Germany. Um, uh, in the afternoon before and then they drove like 600 kilometers and played like as a very last band in the small okay. uh stage uh downstairs at Euroblast at one or two in the morning <laughs> um that was also cra crazy um yeah crazy for 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 a band to do that but but yeah. they delivered <laughs> yeah well that just goes to show how much musicians are involved with their music and that, that, that they are willing to you now do two shows a day which is and travel a lot in between so yeah that's that well oh, that's really nice yeah um wonderful uh thank you paul for taking the time now i'm gonna leave you to to uh tend to the very last uh preparations i'm gonna um Yeah, it's 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 not Thursday already, so I'm not going to start packing, but almost feels like, yeah, I think a lot of people are excited uh, uh, to finally be able to go to a festival again. So the next uh, three, three work days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday will go by in no time, I'm sure. And then I'm looking forward to to to, to seeing you in the Netherlands in Eindhoven. Um, Yeah, April uh, 15 and 16, right? The prognosis, yeah. the second edition. Uh, see you there, Paul. Thanks for yeah. taking the time. And uh, oh, we all, we hope, of course, that we, we're going to see a lot of you uh, people out there who are listening. Uh, yeah, and there's a few tickets left. So if you want to go, grab them. Before grab, them grab them while you can. Yeah. Uh, That's it for, for this uh, special little episode. Um, until next time, stay safe, take care, and keep spreading the prog love. <laughs>